What are Paul and Barnabas up to in spreading the word of Jesus? That's what we're going to find out today in Acts 14. Now, they went to Iconium, and they entered the Jewish synagogue, spoke in such a way that both Jews and Greeks believed. But there were unbelieving Jews who tried to stir up trouble with people against them. But they stayed there, you know, quite a while, it says, and then they spoke boldly for the Lord. It says that they bore witness to the word, and they were granted signs and wonders. It's really good. And here's the interesting thing. It says, some sided with the Jews, and then some sided with the apostles. Both Paul and Barnabas, apostles. That's cool. It says that people were trying to mistreat them with their rulers and tried to stone them. They heard what was going to happen, and they fled to Lystra and Derby and to the surrounding country. They continued to preach the gospel. Good for them. But in Lystra, it, there was a man who couldn't walk. It said he was crippled from birth, and he was hearing Paul speak. Paul looked at him intently. You know, it was funny because Peter looked at the man who couldn't walk intently too, the beggar at the Jaffa gate. It says, seeing that he had faith to be made well, Paul said in a loud voice, stand up on your feet. And the man, right up. The crowd saw what Paul did and began saying, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. The backstory is, is this particular town had a story that both Zeus and Hermes came into the city and appeared as normal men. And when nobody gave them the hospitality they thought they should be given, they wiped them out. They wiped out the whole population except for this one couple. Maybe that couple did okay. So now this was a warning signal to this town like, oh, we better be nice to you because, you know, Zeus and Hermes are here and they're going to wipe us out again. Oh, goodness. So the apostles heard this was happening and saw that the people in the town wanted to start sacrificing to them because they thought they were Zeus and Hermes. I thought it was interesting because, you know, there's always this like, well, why did Zeus be Barnabas and Paul Hermes? And some people say, well, Paul was kind of the spokesperson and Hermes was someone who sent messages. You know, he, he was the messenger. But then I also thought, you know, Zeus always, I think, appeared older. So maybe Barnabas is older. I don't know. We're just making stuff up. And they tore their garments and said, you know, why are you doing this? We're just men. We're just people just like you. We're just bringing the good news, the gospel, so that you should turn away from all these things and start to follow the living God, the one who made heaven and earth and the seas and everything on them. You know, take, go away from your vegan beliefs. And even more so, It says that God had allowed people to walk in all nations their own way and didn't leave a witness for them, but did all these great things for you. It rained, you know, when you live in a desert climate, and I don't know if in these cities it's a desert climate, but rain is good when you're in an agricultural system. You need rain to plant and water, to water your gardens, your crops, your food. And it says that He still, even though he let you walk his own way, and even though there wasn't a witness to him here, you saw the goodness and the gladness of what God was doing for you. But the people didn't care, and they wanted to do sacrifices to them. Not all Jewish people, because some of the Jewish people were believing, but Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and persuaded the crowds, and they started to stone Paul, dragged him out of the city when they thought he was dead. And when the disciples, the followers of Jesus, stood around him, he got up and he went right back into the city and made more disciples. Then they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. It says an interesting thing. It says strengthening the souls of the disciples, you know, to encourage them to continue in the faith and the tribulations, you know, telling them, you know, there's going to be tough times. This is going to be hard. That they appointed elders with prayer and fasting and admitted them to the Lord who they believed. We're now setting up a, a church structure. My thinking about this, it, it was like there's ways to make converts to any religion, right? You have social pressure, or you put your boot on their neck and tell them they have to or they're going to die. But when you're trying to show that God loves you, He wants you to follow Him with the help of the Holy Spirit, not at the end of a sword. First of all, you have to share the word so they know what it is. 
But also, again, that we talked about that before, you know, Barnabas, that encourager, train and disciple. But now to set up this elders so that there would be some leaders in the church who can help strengthen them, build them together as a people. It reminds me too of Moses, you know, Moses is out in the desert and what is God doing? He's turning them into a people. This is what we're doing in the church now. We're going to have these elders and we're setting them up in the right way with prayer and fasting so that they can go do the mission of God. They went to a town called Pamphylia. Now, it was my big theory that this is where pamphlets came from, and it turned out not to be true. Pamphlets are not from this particular area. Then they kept going. They went to Perga, Italia, and then they sailed to Antioch again, where they commended the grace of God because they said now that their work they had fulfilled. They arrived and gathered the church, again, church is a people, not a building, together, and they declared, that God had done with them and had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. They did what they were supposed to do, and now it's your time. Faith to the Gentiles is open. And they remained, it says, no little time, meaning they stayed a long time. <laughs> Say it a little bit more clearly, but that's okay. Luke's a wonderful writer. And that ends Luke 14. And what I'm going to meditate on this week is how whenever it is you say something related to God, related to his church, There's always going to be people who are right there and go, yeah, you're right. There's going to be people who dissent and say no and try to stir up unbelief. And even in this case, it was violence. But in even that case, Paul showed you have persistence. You keep preaching and you keep going for it. You keep doing the word of God regardless of what happens. What I'm going to pray about is the fact that when I hit tough times, I don't shrink from the challenge that I can withstand tough times and keep going. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that the apostles, even the apostles, are just men. They are like us. I think it makes them more human. They had their strengths. They had their weaknesses. We saw that all through the course of the Gospels. They are people like we are. But in this case, they are going out and doing the bidding of God and being bold about it. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember... You can always email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. I would love to hear from you. Are you reading the Bible along? Are you enjoying this slow roll through the Bible? And I hope it's informative to you. Thanks so much for listening. Mm-hmm.